All right, guys. Uh, next up, we're going to talk about barbecue sushi. Um, it is only sushi in the name, and uh, we are actually going to cook it unlike normal sushi. Uh, but it is really cool. It doesn't take a lot of time, and uh, it's something really cool that you can do. The very first thing that you're going to need is a sushi roller like this. You can pick them up at uh, most Reesers around. I, I think I found both of these at Reesers for around $3. Um, so a sushi roller is best. If you don't have a sushi roller, uh, foil will work. You've just got to work a little bit slower with it. Um, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to lay it out here and we're going to make a sushi roll and, uh, and cook it up and be ready to eat. So the very first thing we want to do is take, take out some bacon. Uh, usually I like to use center cut bacon, but if you don't have center cut bacon, regular bacon will work as long as you're not using thick cut bacon. So this is just some regular Hormel bacon. And what you're going to do is just take your strips out and just lay them the length of the, of the sushi roll. And what you really want to do is on these gaps here that you'll have is you just kind of want to work with your, your pieces of bacon because none of them are perfect, but just kind of work them together a little bit to try to close the gap that you'll have between them to try to fill in that area. So just kind of play with it and look around, see what you need to do. Usually um, you'll end up using for, for one roll, um, six or seven pieces probably. This is a little bit thicker, so we might get away with six. But we're just gonna line it up and try to close the gaps as best we can. To make this sushi roll. So this one, We'll get by with about six. We might be able to squeeze seven out of it. We'll just stick with six. So once you have that, you want to leave. Um, so if you look at the sushi roll here, we're, we're almost at the top here and we're overlapping at the end here. So what I'm going to do is just trim this off uh, at the end of the, of the sushi roll, the sushi roller. Set this aside. You don't want to just get rid of it. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is breakfast sausage. This is kind of where you get to be creative. You can use whatever you want. Um, I'm using breakfast sausage here, uh, but you can use, you know, anything you want. You can be as creative as you want. I'm using about a half a pound here. Um, that's about perfect. And what you want to do is just grab a little bit off and smash it down about as thin as you can make it. Just really spread it out in your fingers like that. But you're wanting to get a good piece together. So just kind of make it as thin as you can. And then you're just going to lay it right on top of that bacon. And then push it down. And what we're going to do is spread it all out. Now you might, it might start peeling up with the bacon, but just kind of work it in. and keep spreading it out and just piece it together. And what you want to do is fill in this whole, you want to cover the bacon for the most part with it. Just a thin layer. It's kind of like a, uh, a mini fatty. So one of the things we like to do when we go camping or go on trips is we'll make up a couple of these and then take them with us and then uh, be able to throw them out. Um, they're great with eggs in the morning or just as, as dinner or as a, as a little bit of an appetizer.
And again, you just want to get it as thin as you can and as even as you can. For one roll, about a half a pound, a third to a half a pound, depending on how thin you can get it. Um, oop, that one took off. Um, so we've got it laid out. We've got a good base there. And now what we want to do is add our cheese. So we've got some stick cheese here. And one thing that I did with these is I went ahead and froze them uh, yesterday so they won't uh, melt, melt as, as quickly. So take a couple of pieces of stick cheese out and set them right up here up top like that. And then we want to go to our vegetables. Um, for today, what I'm using is just jalapenos and red onion. You can use whatever you can. We've done mushrooms in it, um, whatever you want. But we're doing jalapenos and red onion. And we're just going to slice them up. And just lay it straight in there next to the cheese. And you can do as much or as little as you want. And then we'll take our onion. And cut us down a few slices of that. And lay that in there as well. So now comes the roll part and we're just gonna take the sushi roller and just bring it up and lay it over like that and just start rolling with it. And when you get a little bit in, you'll stop and you'll pull your roller out. Keep rolling it up until you've got it all in your hand. And what you've got looks just like a roll of sushi. You got it in the light, okay? Okay. So this is ready to go on the grill. Um, I will grill this at about 350 degrees uh, with the heat deflector off because I want that the bacon to crisp up. I'll put it on for about 10 minutes, just like this, and then in about 10 minutes, rotate it over. Uh, let it go for about another 10 minutes and then um, check it. Um, for the internal temperature, we're trying to hit 160 internal internal temperature on the on the uh, the sausage. When it's close, I'll come back and I'll uh, brush it with some barbecue sauce. Let it go for about five more minutes, and then we'll pull it off, and it'll be ready to eat. So. I'll trade you out, Sean. It takes about tw 25, 20, 20 to 30 minutes for a roll. And when it comes off, she's all ready to slice up. And from there, we'll just slice it up just like, just like sushi. And we'll just Slice it up, and you are ready to go. You can plate it up and make it look as fancy as you want. And then at the very end, I like to hit it with just a little bit of extra barbecue sauce. And you're ready to go. Any questions? Yeah. Here. 
So, no, we did not cook it in the foil. Um, we, we cooked it just directly on the grill grates with no heat deflector, just over the open flame at about 350. Again, rotating about every 10 minutes. Um, we just uh, put it in the foil pan when we were finished cooking to keep, to keep the temperature in it. How does it reheat? It reheats very well, especially in the morning with a fried egg. And that was one of the other questions, is could eggs be added to this? Absolutely. So you can do anything you want. It's, it's, it's almost like uh, the fatty, where it's, it's just up to you. Um, like I said, you can do, do mushrooms in it. You can, you can really substitute any of the ingredients that you want. Um, We've done uh, pepperoni with uh, cheese in the middle of it and, uh, and some pizza sauce in it. You can do uh, just whatever you want to do with it. All right, give us just a second and uh, Trent's getting ready to be up next. Hey guys, I'm Trent Gallegos. I'm an ambassador with Hasty Baked Charcoal Grills and I'm gonna walk you through how to do a grilled shrimp curry. Something a little bit different, but it's a Easy recipe to do on a weeknight, takes about 20, 25 minutes from beginning to end. So I'm gonna go over our ingredients real quick. And uh, right here we've got about a, a cup of minced onion, about a tablespoon of minced garlic and a little bit of red chili flake, about a teaspoon, and uh, a little bit of ginger in there, sorry about that. And then over here we've got diced asparagus with uh, minced garlic in there. And uh, here's some cilantro for garnish. We got some big chunks and little dice pieces too. And over here we've got some uh, curry powder. Now this is just store-bought curry powder. You can get wild and make your own. Be creative with it, but this stuff works just fine. And then our last ingredient, some nice peeled and deveined shrimp. So they're ready to go. Okay, our first, oh, and one more, sorry. We got Thai coconut milk, very important for this recipe. So our first step, we're gonna heat a cast iron skillet. This is about 10 inch over medium high heat. Gonna add a little bit of peanut oil. Let that get hot. Doesn't take very long. This skillet's been on for a little while. So let that warm up. And our first step is we're gonna add the onion and ginger and we're gonna cook until in the, in the red pepper flake. Yeah, you can use vegetable oil, canola oil. Uh, feel free to use a neutral oil. If you like olive oil, it could work too, but we're just really kind of anything. The peanut oil or sesame oil add a little bit of that Asian flavor that we're looking for. So our oil is hot right now. We're going to add in our onion, our ginger, and our red pepper. Now we're going to stir, get all this stirred in there. And we're not looking to brown the onion. We're just looking to get it cooked down. We want about five minutes over that medium heat. If you notice your onions start getting a little brown, lower your firebox down a little bit. We're gonna do that to keep the heat down. This is gonna take about five minutes or so, maybe a little longer, maybe a little bit less. The ginger and the onion and the red pepper are all gonna kinda come together right here. This is when it's nice to have a cast iron skillet. It'll help the heat retention. You'll cook real evenly right here. And remember, we're not trying to brown the onions here. We're just trying to get them cooked down a little bit, translucent, tender, because they got a lot more to go. They got to cook a while, bit, a while longer. Make sure you're constantly moving around. We don't want any, really don't want a bunch of brown bits happening. Keep it nice and even. Any questions so far? All right, they're starting to cook down nicely here. This will be a nice base. The ginger and the onion, I wish you guys could smell it. It smells really, really good over here. Medium heat, it's probably gonna be about on your bake setting, maybe a little bit lower. Uh, just think on your stove about, if it's a gas stove or electric stove, it'd be about a five on there. Just, you know, we're not wanting to really get it screaming hot. We're not wanting to sear anything off. We just want enough to get a nice saute and cook them down a little bit. Let their let the flavors release into each other. All right. Getting there, we're getting pretty close. Our onion's starting to get a little translucent here. Ginger's getting real fragrant. So we'll let that cook for about another, more, another minute. 
If your heat gets, if your fire gets a little too hot, like I was saying, you can feel free to, to knock it down a little bit because we're going to be having the lid open the whole time here. All right. I think we need about another minute. All right, I'd say our garlic, or I mean our ginger and our onion and our red pepper flake are, are pretty fragrant at this point. They're starting to look, starting to get a little translucent. You want to get in there? Oh, that's hot. You want one more? You can see we're starting to get a little, little more color, but we're not going brown on the onions. We don't want to go brown. Just remember that. All right, golden, a nice golden color. All right. So our next step is we're going to add the curry powder. I, oh, sorry, asparagus and uh, and garlic. We're going to let those kind of sizzle away. Now with your garlic, you want to remember, only cook it for about a minute or so on its own. It'll start to burn, but that's okay. We're, our next step will come in pretty soon. We just kind of want the, the oils in the garlic to release and start once again, getting a little fragrant. Let these uh, asparagus tenders kind of cook down a little bit, get a little flavor in them. All right. And we lost an asparagus piece there, which I, I do every single time I cook on a hasty bake, so not a really big deal. It is an offering to the, the barbecue gods, so just be fine with losing asparagus. It happens to all of us. So we're gonna let that go for about a minute. So we're probably about there. That garlic is starting to smell pretty good. Our next step is, now we're gonna add the curry powder. This is where our flavor really starts to come in. We're not gonna add any oil or any liquid right now. We're gonna wanna let that nuttiness from it really release in the pan. Coat the, the onion and the asparagus. You'll get a really good color on this. There we go. Yeah, asparagus is raw. I like to use a smaller size asparagus. The thick ones may be better for cooking with your steak, but these ones will, will do a lot better. So maybe pinky size, depending on how big you are. So. Are you reducing your heat right now? Yeah, I reduced the heat a little bit. We're still at a medium, uh, medium temperature. If you want to see what the, the onion, starting to take on the color of the curry. It's released, it's all fragrant now. So now we're going to move on to our next step. All right, our next step, we're gonna add coconut milk and make sure when you add this to shake this very vigorously. Oh, sorry, it's a little sideways. It'll help mix it up. It's like using a can of paint. So Can't really, now, it is open, but yeah, I have some pretty good moves in case you guys are wondering. So we're gonna add that in. We're gonna give it a nice stir. And, um, and here's where, you re where's where the flavor really starts to develop. It's gonna start to really thicken up. The flavors are gonna, are gonna combine, they're gonna get together. We're gonna get to know each other. And the thing about the curry too is if you really like the flavor of curry, feel free to add a little pinch more. I've got the ingredients down, well, I'm sure we'll send out on the recipe later. I use about a tablespoon plus a quarter teaspoon. But if you like more of that flavor, add another dash or two in. It'll, 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 it'll all work. So now we're gonna wanna bring our, our heat up. It's about a medium high. So if you look, it's a little past the bake setting. We wanna get a really good simmer going on right here. We want this to reduce down about at, at least half. And if you look in here, I don't know if you guys can get the camera or not, but you can see it's already starting to reduce around the edges of the pan. And once this really gets hot and gets going, It'll really, it'll go, it'll go pretty quick, but this, this step will take about 10 minutes or so. So while this is cooking, this is a good time to grab your shrimp. We're gonna grab some, some nice shrimp here and season it lightly. We really don't want to overdo the flavor on here because it's going in a Thai dish. You know, we don't want to do barbecue shrimp or really a, a Southwest or Mexican style. We kind of want to keep it simple. And so today we're using Fin and feather, it's got a little bit of a citrus, it's got some nice herbs, works really well. We'll do it nice and light on there. So we'll season that up. We've got our shrimp on skewers, so it makes it really nice and easy to grill and turn over. You can keep the tail water off into the dough. 
that's uh, completely up to you. I like to keep the tails on. It looks cooler, you know. It kind of gives it a nice fancy feel to it, but you can go tail off. You can use big shrimp, uh, small shrimp. I like to do a good medium size to large shrimp because it's going to be it's going to be really the the main. It's going to be your protein on this meal, so you know don't don't skimp on the shrimp. And why do you use raw instead of so so we so we use <laughs> we use raw shrimp here. It's a little inside joke here, but. Uh, we're gonna use raw shrimp in this recipe. We're not gonna cook it all the way. We're just gonna grill it to get some nice char marks on it. Probably about, you wanna cook it about 70% of the way through because we wanna finish it in the curry to let a little bit of that shrimp briny flavor get in there and kinda, kinda let go and release through there. So back over to our curry, it's still cooking down nicely. It's getting really, really starting to thicken up. So here in about a minute, we'll probably, we'll throw our shrimp on and we'll get it grilling. Right. If Nick can get in there, you can see how much it's reduced down there too. Can you see that? That's good. All right, and for your shrimp, just go with a nice hot fire. We don't we don't really need to do anything special here. And like I said, on your seasoning, just kind of your favorite. But remember, don't go too heavy. We don't want to go too much in any direction. A salt, pepper, garlic base works very well here. So we're going to let these shrimp grill up a little bit over a nice direct hot fire. I'm going to bump it up to sear here. And make sure every once in a while you give your curry a little bit of a stir. We don't want anything, any bits to stick to the bottom or burn. If you've, uh, if you've ever made a roux in your life, it's kind of, uh, kind of the same principle. You want to keep stirring and stirring as it gets thicker and thicker and the flavor concentrates. So if we look at our curry now, it looks like it's about a third of the way done. Our shrimp's coming along nicely. We're going to kind of let this rock for a little bit. Any other questions right now? Oh yeah, one thing I was gonna mention, we're cooking with asparagus today, but that doesn't mean you have to use asparagus. Feel free to use you know, broccoli or uh, any sort of Asian vegetable like the baby corn. Snap, yeah, snap peas would be great. Uh, feel free to throw mushrooms in there, bell pepper, the sky's the limit. And speaking of peppers, if when I put the crushed red pepper, feel free to get uh, a nice fresh Thai chili and dice it up in its, in its place if you wanna really get some flavor going. Yeah, you'll be, you'll be sweating about as much as I am out here today, so it'll get you good. All right, we're going to flip our shrimp over, see how they're looking. Starting to curl up a little bit, get a little more opaque. It's about what we're looking for. Uh, I go by look. If you want to, if you want to take the temperature of your shrimp with an instant read, your uh, your bottom end of the temperature for most people is going to be around I think about 120 degrees, and it's kind of a personal preference on how much you like it cooked through there. But you like to look for like an opaque look. You want them to see them curl up a little bit, but we don't really have to worry about getting them all the way cooked uh, at this stage since they are going to go into the curry right here to really finish out of the sauce while it simmers. Just to clarify, that 120 is not cooked. That's, that's the very, that's probably the low end. Yeah, that's, that's about the par cooked on there. So just get some good, nice good grill marks. We're almost there. And that, uh, that little bit left to cook, the shrimp will kind of release its flavors back into here. I'll show you guys how this is looking. It's really reduced down nice. You can see it's thick starting to get starting to really concentrate in the flavor this is kind of another personal touch if you want to let it reduce down more and get stronger in flavor feel free to do that just like any kind of sauce or reduction so we're looking pretty good probably about about where we want to need it or about where we want to have it before we throw the shrimp in so i'm going to grab another glove we're going to start tossing the shrimp in Right. We've got about 
a pound and a half to two pounds of shrimp here. So, you know, that's, and that's kind of up to you. If you really love shrimp, pour some, some more in there, but be, be cognizant about how much per you need. So you may need to double the recipe if you're doing a, a little bit more shrimp. And I really like these kind of, these are the 26 to 30 count in a pound shrimp. These are, <laughs> these are really good for this kind of dish. You don't really, you may cut them once, you may just take two bites. The bigger shrimp you may need to cut up into a few pieces. The little ones kind of, they'll work fine too, but they can kind of get lost in there. These big ones are nice to get a little bit of flavor. So here's about what we're looking like on the shrimp. It's a nice little grill mark. You can see they've kind of gained some opaqueness and they're ready to go in. All right, so now that the shrimp are in, we're gonna finish it all. We'll go over a medium, medium fire, back to the medium. We don't really wanna cook it down too much more. And at this stage, this is where you're gonna kinda add your, your salt and pepper. And I've got about, oh, a tablespoon or so of salt. You don't want too much black pepper in to, to really gear the recipe that way. And as you can see, the shrimp are really soaking up the flavor here. You can see the reduction has really cooked down and they're really soaking it up and they're really starting to get finished here. So I'm gonna, so I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. Should be about, I don't know, a pinch. Be free with that. And then a little pepper. Salt, <laughs> salt yeah, there you go. I could do a little salt like that. I don't know that we have any pepper out here, but add a little dash of pepper. It's just for flavor. So this is the, the very last part of it. We're gonna let that, we can move our heat down to about a medium. We're not really need, or even lower. We're not really even need to cook anymore. Iron skillet, a lot of heat built up in it. We just wanna look for these shrimp to be done. And they're really getting close now. Hold it up for you to see. You can see. See our shrimp is about finished. Our sauce is reduced down to a pretty low amount. And then we've got our last stage. And I'll tell you this, so this is, this is fish sauce. This is pretty strong stuff. I like to use a dash or two, but maybe up to a tablespoon, but start on the low end. This is not something you wanna just kind of go crazy with. It's not like sriracha or hoisin or whatever. This is gonna add a little bit of that extra, extra flavor, a little brininess, really goes well with the dish. So we're gonna put that on. Give it a good stir. And then we'll be about ready to plate. And I'll say uh, one thing you can do ahead of time, which we have done is just uh, cook some rice and it uh, doesn't have to be hot, it can be cold. We've cooked some uh, white basmati rice. Feel free to use your favorite sushi rice from uh, your favorite sushi place or anything like that you've got lying around. I'm just lowering this firebox down since we don't need to really eat anymore. All right, we're about ready to plate here. All right, we've got a couple. You guys have any more questions on what's going on about how the reduction should look or any sort of temperature? I'll wait a second here for you guys. Good to go. Here we want to do a close up of about what it looks like here. Here's about what it looks like reduced down. You can see it's really thickened up and I really wish you guys could smell the flavors coming off of here. It is just incredible. So we've added a little bit of flair right here, which is just a couple extra grilled shrimp. Feel free to do this to impress your guest or your date whichever. So we're just going to take this. We're going to scoop out our shrimp and our curry mix right onto our white rice. And I'll tell you right now, the sauce is addictive and you'll want to put it on everything. I always, when my, uh, my wife and I make this recipe, I always want extra sausages to have throughout the week, put on whatever, whatever's available. And there you go. Make sure you get plenty of this sauce. You can see it's really reduced down. And then for one last little touch, 
We've got some cilantro, some of it diced, some of it in big chunks. We're just gonna garnish it with a little bit of that. And if you don't have cilantro or you, or you don't like cilantro, I know some people think it tastes like soap, which is interesting, but you can use mint as well, and mint's a really good garnish for that. So there you go. Got your weeknight grilled shrimp curry. Yeah, we're gonna do a quick reset. When we get right back, we're gonna have some bananas foster, which is really the main reason I'm here. I can't wait to see this one. So we'll see you guys in just a few minutes. Hey guys, um, I'm Sean Walker, another one of the ambassadors. Um, hope you saved room for dessert because uh, we're getting ready to do a little grilled bananas foster. Um, I'll, I'll show you what I've got going on. First of all, another cast iron pan. It's not the one that the curry was in, so it's nice and clean. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on. Um, I've got the fire cranked quite a bit up on this one. I want that to get hot as fast as I can. I want it hot. I've already uh, chopped up some of my bananas that you can see. Um, but all I did on the bananas, peel them up. And depending on the size of your bananas is how you want to cut them. You don't want these small, like bite-sized pieces. You want, to, want them a little bigger than bite-sized. So this banana, it's a pretty small one. I'm gonna go ahead and do thirds on this. And then I cut them in half, long ways. And the reason you don't want to do bite size is because you're going to be flipping a lot of these and it's better to go ahead and have them in bigger pieces to, um, to turn those in the pan. Um, also with butter, um, we'll have the recipe up for you a little bit later and it calls for six tablespoons. I'm going to get a little aggressive here and just use this whole stick. So we'll be at eight tablespoons. I have yeah, it's butter. I mean, can't go wrong with butter, right? I like to go ahead and slice it. How ripe do they need to be, Sean, for the uh, Yeah, I like them um, yellow. Um, not too green, but not too brown either. If they're too brown, they'll get real mushy on you. So you want them pretty yellow. If they've got a little bit of green in them, perfect. Just don't go too brown on them. Um, I, I went ahead and sliced the butter up in little pats, about a tablespoon a piece. That way it's a lot faster and a lot more even once you get them in the pan. And they're starting to melt right away. I've got that uh, pan pretty hot. It didn't take long. Luckily, Trent already had my uh, had the grill heated up pretty good. So um, I'm going to let that go ahead and heat up for a minute. I want that butter completely melted. Um, it won't take long at all. Shout out to my grandma. That's her cast iron pan. It's probably older than I am. Um, can't wear those things out. Filter, filter, <clears throat> vanilla there. Once this gets all melted up, I'm um, use a spatula. It's, it's melting evenly. This is not a dish that you want to prepare ahead of time. I mean, this is something you can do after you've eaten dinner because you want it. Um, fresh coming screaming hot right off of the grill. If you try to prepare it early, your bananas are gonna get real soggy and just kind of gonna kind of be a mess. So go ahead and eat, let, let your grill stay hot and um, come back out with the cast iron pan, put everything on there and you'll be ready to roll and this doesn't take long at all. But um, I've used five bananas here. Um, just kind of figure out how many people are eating. Um, if you're doing, you kind of figure about a banana per person. So if you got five, five people eating, five bananas, but sometimes you get your bananas pretty big, so it could be less. Yeah, it's pretty close to all melted up. And next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in some uh, brown sugar. Um, this is about uh, three quarters of a cup. I mean, this is kind of eyeballed right now. I didn't have measuring cups, so I balled it so a little heavy on, that. heavy on the butter too, so no problems at all. Can't be bad. Spilt all of our. And you just want to stir this until all is melted and incorporated. And Everything needs a little salt, so where's our salt? I'll throw a little salt in there too. And again, I'm not measuring. I'm just throwing in a little bit, just sprinkle of salt. It's not a whole lot, but just enough to make it good. Mm. 
you just have to stir it quite a bit just to make sure the the butter and the brown sugar get mixed up together. I've got it pretty hot now, so I'm going to back off the heat just a little bit. But these cast iron pans will will carry over a lot of heat. So if you don't have cast iron to do this, just any oven safe pan will work. I think I'm pretty close to getting everything incorporated. Um, I want to add a little bit of cinnamon as well, probably, you know, a teaspoon and a little bit of just vanilla. I like to add the vanilla at the end. Um, if you add it too early, it's going to cook away and it's not going to be present in your final presentation. So you can hear it's still sizzling up quite a bit. So everything's incorporated. Now it's time for the bananas to go in. I just like to dump them in, kind of spread them out, get you kind of an even layer. Doesn't have to be perfect. And they're just gonna ride for a minute. I like to let these go um, two to three minutes per side. Um, the second side usually a little bit less, so if I went three minutes on the first side, I'd flip them over and do uh, two minutes on the second side. They're bananas. They're going to cook really fast. Um, if you don't want to worry about trying to flip individual pieces of banana, just let them cook for a little bit, and then stir it together. It's all going in the same bowl anyway. Any questions while we're waiting on that to cook up? <laughs> Remember when you're cooking with cast iron on there, it's going to be really, really hot. A um, couple of things you can do, you can wear the big welding gloves to pick up your pan. Got a couple little sleeves that go right on the pan. Uh, this was Trans he brought, it's made by Lodge and it's leather and it's uh, got a big pad on the inside. So. You know, you can pick that up. You may have to use your spatula or tongs or something to get a good grip on it, but you can pick that up and carry it now. Do you want that mixture boiling or do you just want it hot? Almost boiling, not quite, uh, not a rock. Bubbles. Bubbles. Um, second option is just these little silicone sleeves, same thing. They just slip on and they allow you to make, uh, you know, you can quickly transport that somewhere if you're having to get across Trey's backyard, you don't want to do that. It's going to be too hot. But I'm going to go ahead and stir those up a little bit, get everything mixed in. You just want every one of the pieces of banana to be covered in the, the sugary goodness. And I'll let it ride a little bit longer. And in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and uh, get us a bowl of ice cream ready. We're just using a vanilla bean ice cream. It, to me, it works the best. You, if you don't like the bean in it, just use a regular vanilla. Um, whew, this got soft out here. So we'll put a couple of scoops in here. And let's go three scoops. This is for Parsons. We'll give him three. And I'm just going to stir them up a little bit. I'm not taking the time to really turn each one of these individually. They'll be fine. Some of them will break. That's they're all going to the same place. So I, I think they're pretty good now. I want to go ahead and grab them, pull them off. And that's all there is to it. Um, Nick, did you get a good shot of that? Before I dump it out on the cutting board for you. Then scoop you up some bananas, put them over the ice cream. Don't forget to dig in deep and get a lot of that extra sauce on there. And there you have it. Bananas Foster on the Hasty Bake.
How much rum do you drink while you make Oh, I totally forgot the rum. Thank you for reminding me. Let's go back. Let's back up a step. It's just a forgot the rum. I like to use just a, uh, a cheap dark rum because it's going to burn off anyway. So what I did is put about a quarter cup in. And be careful doing this over the fire because this is flammable. And it will light on you. So I'm going to light it with a uh, torch instead. And it's just going to burn off. It'll only take a few minutes. I'm not sure if you can even see the flame on the it's flaming i promise you but it takes it a minute and all that all the alcohol is going to burn out anyway so if you're worried about your kids eating this there's not going to be no alcohol left at all once it burns off it makes it oh uh, it, it does it, it adds to it sorry nick uh you get the uh the, the the, you get you get the virgin version everybody else gets to try the one with alcohol in it but yeah it's still flaming up a little bit um, it can take uh, anywhere from, you know, a minute to about five minutes for that to burn off. But you do want to let it all burn off. It's going to be a little, little tart if you, for, if you serve it with the alcohol still in there. But honestly, I didn't drink any rum before, I promise. I just totally forgot. right at the end, right before you're ready to serve. If you just want it to burn off. So I don't, I don't see any flames anymore. So I'll go ahead and bring it back over. So when the flame stops, it's when it's yeah. burned off. Yep, when the flame stops, that's when it's ready to serve. And again, don't forget to get, a, get an extra spoon of the sauce there. And there we have the one with the rum in it. So nobody's going to want this one, are they? Everybody wants this one? <laughs> I'll make a few more for whoever wants some. Thank you so much for joining us for our first virtual class. Hope the internet was stable enough for you. I know we had some problems on the front end here, but I think it was why Trey was doing his. So we're working on that. But uh, if, if we got any kind of usable video, we will definitely send it out to you. The recipes are going to be posted. Uh, on our Hasty Bake recipe site, which I believe is recipes.hastybake.com. Uh, but we'll also email the link out to you as well as the link to the fire management video. We'll go over the questions, make sure we got everything answered for you. Uh, we really, honestly, truly thank you so much for joining us tonight, though. Uh, it was kind of an experiment for us, but I think it worked pretty good. I know we're all going to eat good tonight. We wish you guys could be here for it. We will resume regular live classes as soon as we're able to. The city right now is not allowing us to have classes the size we'd like to have. So uh, video is kind of what we're, what we're stuck doing right now. But uh, we're excited to at least be able to offer these and kind of continue without everyone being in the dark at home. So any other questions tonight, Jennifer? Trent just made a really good point. Feel free to message us. If you guys are not part of the Hasty Bait Grill community uh, on Facebook, please join in. I mean, there's hundreds and thousands of people on that community. Very, very active people. Some of the nicest people you've ever met in your life. Every single one of the ambassadors that joined us tonight are on that community. And these guys that, are, that taught you guys classes tonight, they're part of kind of an elite group of people that we call ambassadors. Uh, they've cooked a lot. They know these grills like the back of their hand. They go out of their way to help people at all hours of the day and the night. Uh, they're just, they're experts on our grills, they're experts on cooking, uh, and we just love having them uh, on staff with us. So uh, thank you so much to our ambassadors. And Jennifer, is there any other questions? That was it. So uh, feel free to go ahead and jump off. We will email you guys this week with all the wrap-up materials. Thank you so much for joining us, and have a great night.